When we woodworkers think about routing, this tool is almost always used with wood, but a router outfitted with the right bit can cut all sorts of things like solid surface, plastics, and even soft metals. And here's a good example. Recently when I was building this tabletop fire pit project, I needed to cut a hole in the middle of an eighth inch thick piece of plate aluminum like this to fit down inside the project. The aluminum helps to dissipate heat when the fire pit is lit and the hole inside is sized for this little bread pan with the fuel source so it can fit down inside and hang from its rim. Now I could have cut this opening with either a jigsaw and metal cutting blade or a hacksaw, but if you've had much experience with either of those options, you know that it's really hard to cut clean straight lines with either of those tools, especially on a piece of metal this small. I wanted a better solution. And the answer for me was to template route it using this simple shop made jig. This plywood top plate is a hole in the center. That's the same size as the top of the bread pan. And underneath that, I've got a layer of eighth inch thick hardboard all around to hold my aluminum plate securely during routing and so I don't have to apply a lot of extra clamps. I've got a piece of double sided tape applied in the middle here and that's so that when I route away this waste piece in the middle of the aluminum, it's held securely. And these two holes give me a way to pop the plate out when I'm done routing. All of it's held together like a sandwich with these top screws. I've got a three quarter inch piece of MDF under the hardboard and this big piece of plywood on the bottom gives me a way to clamp the jig to my workbench. Now here's how I've got the router set up. Remember I said that the bread pan needs to hang from its rim on the plate and that means that I'm going to need to move my router bit in a little bit so this hole is slightly undersized to fit the pan. And to do that I'm using a quarter inch diameter carbide spiral upcut bit inside of a 7 16 outside diameter guide collar in my router. That gives me 3 30 seconds of an inch of offset between the outside of the guide collar and the edge of the bit which fits the bread pan under its rim perfectly. Now there's nothing special about this router bit. A carbide spiral upcut bit will work just fine for routing this soft aluminum. In fact, any router bit with carbide cutting edges will do the trick. And I'm going to use a plunge router for this operation so I can make that cutout in several passes of increasing depth. Just follow the same procedure for routing the aluminum as though you were routing wood. I set the first pass to 1 seconds inch and route it around the opening clockwise. Then vacuum out the accumulated metal filings. Now repeat the process to make additional passes, cutting about a 32nd of an inch deeper with each pass. That way you won't overstress the router bit and you'll get a nice clean cut. Be sure to vacuum out the metal filings after each pass. When the router finally cuts all the way through the metal, that carpet tape will keep the centerpiece from moving and catching the router bit. What I really like about this method is how cleanly the metal gets milled. It's much, much smoother and straighter than you'll get with a jigsaw or hacksaw. And with a little bit of filing to remove any tiny burrs, this plate is done. And despite what you might fear, routing aluminum doesn't seem to dull a router bit. I've milled several of these plates already, including the one for the project, and my router bit is just as sharp as it was before I started. It's ready for routing wood again. So the next time you have a project that involves cutting aluminum, consider using your router. You might be surprised by how easy it is and how well it works. I'm Chris Marshall with Woodworkers Journal Magazine. Thanks for watching.